that pastry sheet, please? On your side. She's one. One, go. But you look kind of cold, but <laughs> my question is, iceberg cold? Iceberg cold? Well, we got our big ice exclusion zone here, which is a, yeah, a giant wall of ice that we can't cross. <laughs> <laughs> is there actually ice out there? <laughs> no, no, in all seriousness, um, basically in the south we've got a big uh, ice exclusion zone, which is the limit of, uh, you know, how south we're allowed to go. We're not allowed to cross that line, and that, that line's formed basically by uh, them doing scans in the south for, for potential icebergs, looking at the sea temperature, looking at the potential drift of all these things. And uh, based on the advice from a, from a company called CLS, then they, uh, they define our, our ice limits, which we have to respect. Which means, uh, yeah, sometimes it can limit how south, south we can go, and, and you get days like today where uh, Really for the weather we'd go more south if we could, but uh, we're sort of forced to drive down the drive down the exclusion zone, sort of down a hard limit. Our old limit was somewhere through here and uh, in the recent scans, because they're always sort of scanning the course ahead of us in order that we can have the most open race course we can, but we're as safe as possible. And uh, they did an iceberg in this region here. And then uh, generally they drift to the east or the northeast. And then when they hit the warmer water, they tend to uh, they tend to break up or fragment, and that's when you get lots, the lots of bergy bits that actually probably present the biggest uh, biggest risk to us as a fleet. Obviously, in these two. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Are you much yeah. down? I don't know. That's an iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now we lost the moon. Now we lost the screen. Yeah. Oh, we're back on. <laughs> <laughs> Life of luxury out here. Yeah. No, where were we? Uh, they actually have to send the satellite over the top of the zone and then and then get the image. And uh, you know, those image, those images work better than other methods like altimetry because it, you know, it's a real image as opposed to picking up anomalies that might be a fleet of fishing boats or something like that. If we look further down the track, we can see there's quite a big. Quite a big bulge in the Pacific in our ice exclusion zone, and that was because there was a lot of activity with ice here, and they're expecting it to drift in this direction. And uh, we sort of await further scans right now just to see if uh, there's a potential that they can move it down a bit, sort of clear it out our way. But that all depends on uh, yeah how the ice in this area is sort of progressing. I guess I've sailed the. Uh, Sailed the Volvo race, or well, now the ocean race in the in the modern era in uh, in these faster boats, so from, from the 70s onwards. And uh, I think doing the speeds that we do in our in our carbon boats, the last thing we want to see or, or certainly hit is uh, is an iceberg. So, uh, and of course now the technology exists to uh, scan the ice out accurately. So uh, it doesn't really make much sense to sort of send us send us south and dodging icebergs. Because back in the day when the guys were spotting icebergs, the technology wasn't so good, so there wasn't the ability to uh, to spot the ice for one. So it was it was harder to mitigate the risk. And uh, I guess you know the consequences of uh, sailing through an iceberg when you pull back in the 80s doing uh, 10 to 12 knots is probably significantly less than when we're flying along with uh, foils out the side of the boat doing 25 to 30. So. Uh, yeah, it means, it means a few more jives at times. It means, uh, yeah, we maybe stay uh, a little bit further north than the traditional clipper route, but uh, it's all for our safety, it's probably a good thing.